Uh, hello my friends, we are now at Brutal Assault at Czech Republic and with me here is Byron from Valsagot. Hello! Hello, how are you doing? No bad, no bad. Uh, well, you know, first question uh, is about this uh, particular show today. Are you satisfied? Yes, I think we, uh, we enjoyed the show, we enjoyed the crowd response. Um, our first time here, uh, we made some errors, but we always do. That's just part of part and parcel of the whole thing. But no, it was it was great. You know, the crowd was great. The the weather was cool. Um, so yeah, we uh, we were quite satisfied. With it. Uh, yes. Okay. You know, there were obvious some mistakes, but the, the show was really great after all. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, the first uh, question about history of Balsago. How did you get this idea to name band uh, Balsago? And what, you know, does it mean, Balsago, after all? Well, it, I got the name from uh, a story by Robert E. Howard. Yes. It was like, always be my favorite writer. It was from a story he wrote called The Gods of Balsago. And that was first published in about 1931 or something like that. And ever since I read that story as a kid, um, the name just captivated me. And that was pretty much the primary name I had in mind when I came up with the idea for the band. So yeah, that's where the name came from, because Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft, they are very big lyrical inspir inspirations for me. Uh, their stories are fantastic, I've always loved them. So uh, basically it's, it's the pulp fantasy and, and science fiction of the 1930s has always been a powerful influence. Okay, you have just mentioned uh, Lovecraft. Well, obviously Lovecraft has a great influence on you. Uh, so, what, when was the first time when you got into Lovecraft? That will have been probably um, in my pre-teen years. Um, I, read, uh, I read a comic book adaptation of, uh -huh, one, yes. of one of Lovecraft's stories. I think it, what was it now? It might have been The Dreams in the Witch House or it could have been The Dunwich Horror. Um, and I thought, I thought oh, these, were, these were really good. So, as a result, I went and sought out the actual stories, and they were terrifying. You know, terrifying for a kid back then, at my age, and even now, terrifying when I reread them. Just such I agree with you. amazing, yes. amazing, like, um, uh, literary power to conjure up these spectral terrors and horrors and, and the fear of the unknown and what might lurk out there. Uh, Lovecraft is unrivaled in that. It's just, uh, that's why he's such a master in the field today. As he always has been, like I don't think any modern writer has ever surpassed him. Uh, also, you know, are you into Michael Moorcock? Because mm -hmm. I see some parallels in maybe some lyrics, perhaps there are some. Yeah, again, I, I first came across Moorcock with yes. the comic book adaptations. Uh huh. Oh, Felric. Of the I Elric. Okay. And that that made me go and actually read read the Elric stories. Eternal Champion Saga. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, I was never as interested in Elric. Um, as I was in, say, Robert E. Howard stuff. Yes. I think it was, a lot of that might have been down to, to Moorcock's prose style. I, 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 I was never a great admirer of his prose style. I think it was, it was, no, it's great, don't get me wrong, it's some great ideas. Yes, yes. Sir. But I much preferred Robert E. Howard's punchy, dynamic, brutal, fast, you know, prose, prose style, when he gets from one scene to another with minimum delay. The Elric stories seem much more elaborate, much more, elaborately crafted with maybe a little bit too much sort of like extrapolation. Yes. Um, that's why I've never been as interested in Moorcock stuff as I have been Robert E. Howard's. Mm -hmm. Yes, and obviously for example uh, Tolkien is from England and mm. Balsagot is from England and mm. there are obviously some influences. I Absolutely. Yes, I mean t one, of the, one of the inspirations I took from Tolkien was the fact that I found it important to, to, to do a whole elaborate backstory for all the lyrics, yes. like histories, languages, uh, cosmographies, everything um, to sort of provide this background of information for the lyrics. And that's something which, which Tolkien definitely did with, uh, with all the Middle Earth Chronicles. Um, you know, you could, spend, you could spend as much time reading the backstory to, to what he wrote as you could the actual stories themselves. And I just love his, he's such a beautiful writer, it's so lyrical and poetic and just wonderful, really is uh, well deserved the status of a classic, it really is, one of England's finest writers ever I think.